Hello everyone! We're so glad to be here in Amsterdam at the amazing European SharePoint conference. I'm here again with my good friend Goken. Goken, how are you doing? Wonderful, thank you so much. How are you, Vlad? I'm doing great. Uh, Goken, you're from Europe and I feel like I always see you in North America at all the North American events. Amazing. How does it feel to have such an amazing conference in Europe and uh, be able to connect with your local peers? It's amazing, like seeing all those industry experts, leaders, most of people coming down to one big event talking about M365, the future of collaboration, all the AI stacks is, is just simply amazing. Um, we've got a lot of new stuff to share with you guys and I'll give it back to you to make the introduction. Awesome, so we actually just came out of the keynote, not even uh, 20 minutes ago, the keynote ended and wow, we had so many Microsoft people, it was uh, crazy. And But something that I like at, especially at the European SharePoint conference, you know, when you go to a keynote, it's always in the morning. And I'm not a morning person, as a lot of people now know. And uh, you get there, you wake up super early. What I love about ESPC is that they have this amazing show before every keynote. And this time we had this light suits that were dancing with some really energetic music. And that really wakes you up. That really puts you in the mood like, I'm excited to be here, I'm excited to learn, and I'm happy to be here. So I really love that. I was expecting that at the end of the show, it was just Jeff Tipper and all the crew <laughs> just saying like, hey, it's us. <laughs> That was not the case. No, they said they would like to have the suits as well. So I don't think it was them, but no. we never know. We never saw the faces, so no. it might have been Jeff in that dancing suit. Well, yeah. I guess we'll never know. Uh, but then we went into the content, and uh, what an amazing keynote it was. And I'll have to say, but when I got into that keynote, I was a bit expecting for them to just do Ignite all repeat, over again. Repeat, because yes. that's what happens a lot of the time at conferences, especially when you're so close to a big conference like Ignite where Microsoft announces so many things, they don't usually have announcements just one week later, which we actually had some cool announcements, brand new stuff uh, today in the keynote. So we'll talk about that in a few minutes here, but I was so excited that it was not Ignite it was different and one of the things that I loved and Jeff is always a great speaker but I loved how the Microsoft team adapted the keynote to this crowd and Jeff really I mean Jeff always starts by thanking the community of course but in the content he said that we know that AI stuff and the new innovations is what goes in the press but don't worry more than half of our team is focused on building things for today. I'm making SharePoint, Teams, and the whole M365 faster, more stable. So we're not only working on brand new shiny things, we still have more than half the team making your lives better today, even if you don't have a co-pilot license. And, and that makes me extremely happy because that shows that Jeff Steeper's team know that they have struggles today within the actual platform. They know. Not everything is perfect. They work with the shiny stuff, as you said, but they face the real world and they have to make the platform better with the actual stuff of today. So that so makes me very happy. And uh, what do we talk about today? We talked about three main things in the keynote, right? Yes. The first one, which I'm sure it's no surprise to anybody, Copilot. Uh, Copilot was, of course, there. And then we talked about Microsoft Teams. And then um, we ended SharePoint. with, uh, we kept the best for last, or at least, you know, SharePoint's here in my heart. <laughs> we kept SharePoint for last to uh, close out the show. So uh, for Copilot Goken, any highlights? Uh, what did they show? It was basically a recap of all what we knew, like how you could use Copilot within the collaborative apps, within PowerPoint, Outlook, um, Excel, Word, and so on. But one thing I have to say, what really shocked to me or like I was not aware of that is that you could rephrase the copilot responses on your own phone or on your own language the style right? of yeah. speaking it was like make it sound like me there we go and as a non-native American I always aim to make mistakes or as a French it's straightforward you know like it's like oh go to the point and <laughs> by clicking on one button and saying like hey make it on my tone 
that was simply amazing. So I think I'm gonna use that every single day now. Just, you know, the response of the co-pilot, bring them in, into my mail or, or Teams channel or Teams chat, phenomenal stuff. So. Big hats up. But now, now I'm a bit scared. I'm never going to know if you wrote the email or if you just had AI <laughs> write gonna stuff AI. to it's me. It's going to be AI yeah, yeah, yeah. anyway. So you're going to put stuff in AI and then copy paste it to me there on Facebook. Go. I'm a bit scared about that. But other than that, on Copilot, I think there is nothing really new. We saw some of the same videos about Copilot in Excel, Copilot in PowerPoint, Copilot in Outlook. Word and Outlook and everything. And of course, uh, Copilot in Teams. Uh, we had the uh, me, uh, M365 chat, which is co-pilot that allows you to uh, really ask it any question wherever in M365. But then it got a bit more exciting with Teams. Teams. So at Ignite last week, there were quite a few announcements about Teams, and I was there in the Teams expert booth, so I had to learn all of them by heart. Uh, so biggest announcement, the new version of Teams, so Teams V2, is now live not and GA not only on the Windows client but also on the web. And as somebody that uses Teams on the web a lot because I have so many tenants, I'm so happy the first thing I did was go there, click the button and switch to the new Teams. So that was super exciting and Teams again two times faster, which brings us to the point that Jeff was making. We still have people working on making it, the existing teams better for everybody. Then I think uh, there's some mesh stuff mesh. you really like. Yes, so being able to create rooms and build those immersive spaces where you can just invite people, collaborate, talk to them is simply amazing. But what's even better is that they announced that soon, early 24, we could have custom immersive spaces. Yes. So we can build with Copilot rooms, spaces, like we wish them to be. And there was a video pretty amazing where people just could just talk to co-pilots and say, make me that room cozy or bring this to the early 50s and your room would be looking like that. So that's pretty amazing, to be honest. Are you looking forward to making Mesh look like your oh, childhood in your early like the, 50s? Like the 50s, like the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> But I did not know about Copilot in Mesh last week. I knew about Mesh. I know, by the way, for everybody, it's in public preview right now. Uh, Mesh will be GA in January 2024. Four. So Mesh as a whole, really, really soon. But I did not know about Copilot in Mesh, and that will make it so much more fun to design a space that people love. And uh, talking about teams, we also had some cool numbers, by the way. 320 million monthly active users. users of Teams. That's a lot of people. That's a big jump. That's a big jump and uh, Teams just keeps growing and growing and growing. So it's amazing to see more companies uh, be on Teams and uh, hopefully I'm gonna have to work with Slack less and less as we move people to Microsoft Teams. I, I guess you're making reference to some tweet conversations from uh, that's, last uh, week. Okay. That's, uh, that's Never another mind. topic. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. Never mind. Never uh, mind. Then we went to SharePoint. Okay, so All SharePoint. Platform. SharePoint or love. Uh, then we talked about SharePoint and for me, and I mean this conference, now it's called the SPC. It used to be called the European SharePoint uh, conference. So Office 365 it's still, Azure conference. I, I think even when I did the introduction, I said we're at the European SharePoint conference instead of the new name, which is just the SPC, the SPC. I guess. Old habits are a bit tough to, uh, to change, but it's still SharePoint in my heart. But wow. I'm so looking forward to all the stuff in SharePoint. The brand center, the so brand we're gonna center. be able, you, as a client, you're gonna be able to add your own custom fonts in SharePoint. So we know that SharePoint is your intranet and you want it to match your custom identity. But for so many years, if you wanted it to truly look good, to truly follow your brand, you needed to pay hundreds of thousands of dollars to developers that all they do is break stuff, right? Developers, no. I'm not gonna come out with that. <laughs> but you had to pay a lot of money to devs, they had to make custom solutions for things as simple as a custom font. But now, those are coming out of the box. And not only that, but also the ability to create truly beautiful sites. sites. I mean, Modern SharePoint made sites way more beautiful, but what we've seen in the keynote with the different layers that you can add stuff, the different ways we can position things, 
I can't wait to try it. It almost fe feels like a public website builder where you like a Wix or something, but enterprise ready in SharePoint. So really looking forward to that. I'm disappointed you didn't tell SharePoint Server 2010 where we did build those phenomenal, you know, the Ferrari SharePoint sites. I was going to make about I was going to make a joke about SharePoint on-prem. You know how uh, Microsoft said uh, talking about numbers by the way, 2.3 billion documents daily uploaded Uploads. to SharePoint. That's a lot of documents. And uh, remember the book we wrote a couple years ago on yes. how to increase SharePoint performance? performance? I'm sure the firms we built following that book, they could handle 2.3 billion documents a day, right? Uh, not yes. going to comment either. <laughs> uh, we should try it. We should rebuild the SharePoint farm and see how many documents we can upload in a day and have it not break. But 2.3 billion it's documents in a day is just crazy. Tremendous, to be honest. Like, it feels almost impossible to manage and handle and Microsoft can do it without any downtime. Like it, it feels normal. Those numbers feel normal and that's where it actually gets tricky. And that's where you see that Jeff Tipper's team is doing an amazing job. It feels like normal. Yeah, 2.3 billion documents standing there, just this many zeros. If only I had a dollar for each document uh, per day, I'd be really happy. A penny. A penny. A, a penny. penny. I'll, I'll take a penny, a penny as well. A I'll, penny. I'll be happy with that. Uh, but other than that, for SharePoint, what else do we talk about, Goken? Premium. SharePoint Sharp Premium. Syntax. Syntax was the tool that I was using for the last year. Been using it, been um, evangelizing it, been trying to sell this to customers. And Jeff did tell us one thing, the branding. The branding was not that optimal, although all the new features we got into that, like data extraction, e-signatures, the management, the project Archimedes, all of those stuff that probably could handle all the issues we had today, well, due to the branding was almost not visible. And I think they made a great job to rebrand this as SharePoint Premium. And we heard that like people, when they see SharePoint, they get automatically interested. And they made three main categories, basically SharePoint syntax, just take it out and put it into SharePoint Premium. And I feel a bit sad because syntax is going so away. You syntax still have is, the swag. I still have the swag. Syntax is going away, but I'm extremely happy because it's back in SharePoint. So the SharePoint love is back and everyone is going to try the new models, use AI builder credits to build the data extraction models. They use the queries, search, e-signatures. They'll go for M365, backup, archive. All the stuff we have within Syntax is going to be loved typically now, not only by the Syntax lovers, but tremendously by every SharePoint lover. So I'm extremely happy. And I was just thinking as you're explaining that, if you love something, let it go, and if it's meant to be, it'll come back, right? Videos in SharePoint, they left us an Office 365 video and stream and they back, back in SharePoint. Uh, so many things. Uh, it was, wait, before Microsoft Syntax, it was called SharePoint Syntax. And so we went that, from SharePoint Syntax to Microsoft. Cortex. Yeah. Cortex, SharePoint Syntax. Uh, Microsoft Syntax, Syntax and, and now Sharepoint. back to SharePoint Premium. So, you know? Kind of, everybody tries to do their own thing, but they know SharePoint is home in the end, so uh, they, they come back to, to where they belong. East, West, SharePoint, best. No, East, West, SharePoint is best. There we go. We'll take it. I oh. love that. <laughs> and, and the last part of the keynote was about something, again, we mentioned at the beginning of the video, we had a brand new announcement that I was honestly not expecting, and uh, it was published today at the same time yes. on Tech Community, the yes. public preview of SharePoint Embedded. Um, Gokan, can you tell us a bit, and I mean, again, we've learned about this 20 minutes ago, so we probably should do a more in-depth video in For the sure. future, but yeah. the first look, what is SharePoint Embedded? So SharePoint Embedded looks really like the repository as a service we had in SharePoint Syntax, or Microsoft Syntax, which is now <laughs> SharePoint Proof. It's always so confusing with all of those <laughs> names, but it's like the repository as a services, where first party and third party People can just build applications, rely on the M365 services, and bring that in SharePoint. So basically, you would have a SharePoint without the SharePoint interface. You just go to your SharePoint, bring that data, and build your custom apps. So that's what they, I think, call SharePoint Embedded, which was the repository as a service or the RAS as we have known. But again, we'll have to double check, we'll have to see. I've quickly seen the images. It really looked like the repository as a service. I, I understood the same thing as you, like there a bare bones SharePoint for 
third-party vendors to store data while allowing companies to still use their compliance tools, security, yes. and keeping the data most important in M365 where Copilot can use it, you can add retention labels, you can really add everything around it. Third party as well as first party. So I can actually go within my organization, build that app and consume data from a stack where I have no actions to do and consume that in my app. And Microsoft is using it. You mentioned first party for Microsoft Loop and Microsoft Designer, Designer. fully built on SharePoint embedded. So again, great to have those for us. And that's about it for the keynote. Uh, something I forgot to mention and uh, Gokan just last minute, I love the names of the customers they shown, especially when talking about AI, when talking about SharePoint Embedded, mm -hmm. a lot of the European customers means. that they shown, because let's be honest, Europe at the beginning of the cloud was were against. not the first ones to go yeah. in the cloud, right? And especially Germany, if we talk about Germany, GDPR. they're one of the first, they're most, they don't really want to go to the cloud. They're love their on-prem, but it's amazing now to see how many European companies were on that list of big customers, first ones to use Copilot, first ones to use SharePoint Embedded. How did, how did that feel for you? Well, honestly, it feels priceless. Seeing some names where I've been working before, seeing some names that are ex industry leaders in Europe, being leading products and giving insights to Microsoft, that's priceless. You know, like always seeing those giants in the US is good, but finally, some European leaders into that list, and hopefully soon, we'll get other countries from Asia, from APAC, maybe from one day from Africa, leading US projects and saying like, hey, this is the way that we should go. It's priceless. Awesome, it's priceless. Goken. I, I think we covered it all. Uh, now, well, first of all, thank you so much for being on the channel again. I feel like again. Uh, every other week, Goken is here. I'm going to have to give you some swag. And talking about swag, one of the best parts of being at an in-person conference is that we can now get swag again. So uh, thank you very much for watching. Me and Goken will go swag hunting and maybe even do a quick video after of all the cool swag we got at Fantastic. ESPC. We'll see. That. That, that would be a cool idea. So Let's do that. thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Uh, make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel to get the latest M365 news. And until next time.